Even the tiniest creatures can bring down the mightiest powers. This is a time-tested saying and recently we witnessed this in the case of jellyfish and nuclear reactors. Hello and welcome to Drishti IIS. My name is Saloni Nankyolir. And though jellyfish and nuclear reactors might seem unrelated at first, in this video we will understand how there is a deep correlation between the two. So there is a nuclear power station in France that is the Graveline nuclear power station which had to shut down three of its six reactors because it witnessed a massive and unpredictable swarm of jellyfish which clogged the inlet of its cooling stations. In fact, the fourth one was also damaged. So, four of the six reactors had to shut down because a swarm of jellyfish clogged the inlet of the cooling system. Such small jellyfish could bring about disruption on such a huge scale on a nuclear power station. Though the plant operator stated that there was no impact on plant's uh, safety or any personal's life or environmental damage, but the working of the nuclear power station was disrupted by this jellyfish bloom. Now, was this the first time that we witnessed such an incident? No, this was not the first time. Such incidents have been on the rise. Jellyfish bloom, jellyfish swarm and the disruption of nuclear power stations, they have been on the rise for a couple of decades now, especially since the 1990s. And if we talk about specific incidents, we saw something in Israel, Japan and Scotland in 2011, Sweden in 2013. In fact, Gravelines, the same nuclear power station that witnessed a disruption right now, also witnessed something similar in 1993. So these things have been happening for a couple of years now. And this gets its water for the cooling system from the North Sea. So the jellyfish bloom in North Sea actually caused the disruption in the cooling systems of Gravelines nuclear power plant. Now, not just uh, abroad, India has also been witnessing such things for a long time now, especially along the western coastlines, along the backwaters. For example, our Kalapakkam nuclear power station in Tamil Nadu also witnessed a similar disruption a couple of decades ago. So, these things have been on the rise across the world. Now, how are the two exactly related? How can the functioning of a nuclear power station be disrupted by jellyfish? For that, we must briefly understand the working of a nuclear power station. So, nuclear power stations, they generate nuclear energy by the method of fission. And fission is an exothermic reaction. A lot of heat is generated in the process because a lot of steam is generated. Steam uh, in turn moves the turbine. Turbine generates electricity. So, a lot of heat is generated in the entire process. Naturally, this has to be cooled down. For that, we have the cooling systems. And these cooling systems get their water from the nearby ocean or sea. That is why you will witness that most of the nuclear power stations are located along the coastline so that they can get their water for the cooling systems from the nearby water bodies. So these pipes, cooling system pipes, they get their water from the ocean or sea. Now these cooling system inlets, they have a mesh. They have a mesh. Why? Because we do not want everything to enter. We do not want the debris to enter, the fish to enter or the fleet to enter. We only want ocean water or sea water to enter our cooling system. That is why we have this mesh or screen. Now, what does jellyfish do? Jellyfish, when there is a jellyfish bloom, which means there is an unprecedented increase in the population of jellyfish. There is a lot of jellyfish in the ocean body. It just enters the cooling system and it gets stuck in the screen. So it does not allow ocean water or sea water to enter the cooling system because it gets stuck in the mesh. So this is what jellyfish do. This is what the swarm of jellyfish do. And this in turn causes a lot of overheating in the nuclear reactor because nuclear reactor needs this water to enter the cooling system to cool it down. But water is not able to enter the system. So overheating happens and then auto cut happens. So nuclear reactors, they have to shut down. This is what happens when there is a case of jellyfish swarm or jellyfish bloom. Now, what is the jellyfish bloom? In fact, not just live jellyfish, live jellyfish disrupts, dead jellyfish also disrupts the functioning. Because when dead jellyfish enters the cooling system, it converts into a gelatinous form and it further enters the cooling system and clogs the pores even within. It gets stuck even within and clogs the pores and it does not allow the ocean water to enter the cooling system. So live jellyfish is also a problem, dead jellyfish is also a problem. Overall, jellyfish bloom in itself is a problem. Now, why does jellyfish bloom happen? For this, you must understand 
that jellyfish will be placed somewhere in the food chain it will have a predator and it will have a prey for the population of jellyfish to increase the population of the predator should go down and the population of the prey should increase then the population of jellyfish will increase and jellyfish has been fortunate in this case the population of the predators has gone down predator in this case is tuna sea turtle their population has gone down because of overfishing overfishing of these species now the population of these uh, species is going down and that is why the predators are going down the population of jellyfish is increasing and prey here is plankton the major prey of jellyfish is plankton and the population of planktons is increasing because of global warming or climate change the warmer ocean temperatures in turn are increasing the population of planktons and the uh, more availability of plankton is increasing the population of jellyfish so predators have also come down prey has increased and plastic pollution which is a very common problem in our water bodies right now that is also working in the favor of jellyfish how because of plastic pollution no other species is able to survive properly because the uh, the oxygen temperatures so the oxygen level it goes down but jellyfish can survive in low oxygen levels also in fact the plastic of just few centimeters actually acts as a breeding ground for jellyfish so jellyfish are even able to reproduce in that plastic pollution so plastic pollution is working in the favor of jellyfish global warming and climate change are also working in the favor of jellyfish that is why we witness this jellyfish bloom now if we talk about the challenges in removing the jellyfish so first of all the challenge is that they are hazardous for such a cleaning to happen it will take 2 to 3 days but it is also hazardous because people who enter these systems to clean it can also be stung by the jellyfish so it's hazardous also it will take time also and it requires a high level of expertise as well so there are some challenges in removing these things that is why the jellyfish once it enters the cooling system it disrupts the functioning of the entire nuclear power station so what is our way forward first of all our way forward here is that we need to get some technological expertise here because the technological expertise more research is needed how will we actually save ourselves save our cooling system from this jellyfish swarm will uh, some researches are work uh, on going on this thing and once we get the results of all those all that research we will be able to develop a system an early warning system so that we first know that a jellyfish swarm is upcoming and we can prepare our nuclear reactor so that the damage does not happen so that's needed and as i already mentioned that climate change plastic pollution global warming everything is working in the favor of jellyfish so we need to curb all these things also so that the jellyfish swarm or jellyfish bloom can be controlled so that was all for today's video in this video we saw how such tiny creatures like jellyfish which have no bones no brain no heart can actually disrupt the functioning of such a huge nuclear power station but the way forward here is that we take care of our technology we invest more in research in early warning system so that we are able to detect that such a thing is happening and in turn we can curb that now let us practice a question for prelims but before that please note that today is the last date of our freedom sale you can get up to 50% discount on all our courses so for more information please call on this number 87501 87501 and avail the benefits now let's look at the practice question for prelims what primary factors have led to an increase in nuclear power plant shutdowns due to jellyfish interference in recent years a increased jellyfish population from ocean warming and plankton abundance b aging of intake screen materials c oil spills causing jellyfish migration or d improved detection technologies preventing shutdowns select the correct answer please provide your answers in the comment section and we will meet in the next video a very happy independence day in advance